Hi, this is Siri Shah from Master of Business Administration, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So in this session, I'm going to discuss about accounting concepts and conventions. So coming to the concepts and conventions, first we must know what is GAAP. What is GAAP? It is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. So here, according to the American standards of accountancy, like this generally accepted accounting principles are going to be accepted based on the substantiality and materialistic of the nature of the accounts. So in this, who are the, who are going to participate in this gap? Like, uh, when we take our own country, that is India, here, uh, these generally accepted accounting principles are going to be included by the uh, RBI, which is Central Bank of India, and uh, banks, uh, any stakeholders, any firms, organizations, companies, and NABAD. So all these are going to give the inputs uh, to the uh, uh, standard of the accounts. That is uh, uh, Indian Chartered Accountant Boards and uh, Accountancy uh, Boards, International Accounting Boards. So all these uh, uh, board members are going to consider few of the uh, accounting principles which are actually required in the accounting system can be included in generally accepted accounting principles. So it is a technical concept which is going to describe what are the basic rules and regulations and concepts and conventions of the accounting procedures. So in this uh, gap, we are going to discuss a few accounting principles uh, that are which are divided into two types. That is, uh, we have two types actually. Accounting principles are like concepts and conventions, just like what are the rules and regulations of the accountancy. So coming to accounting concepts, we have got uh, like few concepts like first one is business entity concept. So we are going to treat uh, this concept, all these concepts and conventions are going to be included in GAP. So uh, in this, we discuss, in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, concepts and conventions of accountancy. In that, we are going to consider what is the business entity concept, what is money measurement concept, what is cost concept, what is going concern concept and realization concept and dual aspect concept. So these are the concepts which we are going to discuss in this session as well as the accounting conventions. So what are the concepts and what are the conventions here? So concepts are the basic rule. So here we have certain rules and regulations for any of the activity. When we take a institution on a, an academic uh, institute, when we consider an academic institute, we have certain procedures and policies, like certain rules and regulations. What are the rules? Rules are like mandatorily we have to follow them. What are the regulations? So this shows the path, how to run the system. So we are just focusing on the rules and regulations of that particular institute and build up our uh, we go on with that particular process in any of the academic institute. So just like that, we are also considering certain accounting principles, just uh, those are accounting concepts and accounting conventions. These are the rules and regulations for the accounting principles, how to do the accounting uh, accountancy system. So why we require to do accountancy actually we require accountancy because we must know uh, what is the profit of the uh, company wh what is the profit of that particular business what is the loss whether profit or loss what is the condition financial condition of that particular business we must know all these things 
So that's the reason we are going to focus on how to do the accountancy system and how the accounting system is going to be maintained. So before we go on with the uh, systematic approach of how to do a accountancy system, one must know what are these concepts and conventions of accountancy until unless we know this, we cannot move forward. So coming to this conventions, we do also have certain conventions uh, like first one is consistency, uh, due, uh, disclosure, relevance, feasibility and conservation. So these are the uh, accounting conventions. So let us uh, discuss in detail about the accounting concepts now. So coming to the accounting concepts, the very first one is business entity concept. So business entity concept means when we consider a particular business, I am a owner. I am establishing a business. When I establish a business, I, I feel I am the owner of the business. And uh, what I do is I sometimes mix up all my personal activity or the personal expenditure or income in the business activity. That is not at all possible as per the concept of business entity concept. Here, business entity concept tells us that we are going to differentiate the business and as well as uh, owner. These two are two different parties. Always we have to treat owner as a different or uh, as a outsider in the business. So that's the reason we are going to consider whatever amount of capital uh, an owner is going to get into the business that is also being treated as loan actually. That is the reason we are going to charge some interest on that capital and that interest on capital is going to be added to the capital amount. And at the end of the, uh, when we wind up the business at that particular moment, we are going to uh, like pay off all the capital which is brought by an owner. So uh, we are going to consider even it is his own business, we are going to consider business as separate party and owner as another party. So here we are going to uh, uh, treat any of the business from right from a small business to a big business, we have to always treat one particular rule. We have to keep it in our mind that we are going to treat business as separate party and owner as separate party. This is the mandatory rule for doing an accountancy. So that is all about business entity concept and coming to the money measurement concept. So here, uh, we have, for example, we have an employee in the organization. He is uh, like uh, he is very good in his work. He is an uh, asset to the organization. We generally say that, right? If an employee is very good, uh, he is excel in his activities and he is going to retire. He is going to retire. He is, of course, he is an asset to the organization, right? But still, he renders so much of service to the organization and uh, he's asset to the organization if he's uh, retiring from his duties, right? So when he's retiring, we are uh, not going, it, he, he is not affecting the uh, accounting system, right? So he is not uh, affecting the accounting system because Though he is asset for the organization, though he is giving lot of, uh, uh, though he is giving a very good amount of uh, experience or very good amount of thoughts, uh, he is going to give to the organization. But he is going to retire. Maybe he is an asset to the organization, but still he is retiring. When he is retiring, anything is going to affect to the organization? No affecting in the sense in terms of service it is going to affect but in terms of money it is not affecting that part we have to recognize so here in my example 
one person is assigned to the organization he is retiring it is not affecting any money concept here right so that's the reason we are not going to consider that as a loss for the organization in terms of money so that is not considered in money measurement concept so what we have to consider in money uh, according to money measurement concept according to money measurement concept we are going to consider uh, like what all are related to money which can be validated in terms of money will only be considered as the items which are going to be posted in accountancy system so as per money measurement concept we are going to validate what are the items which are affecting money which can be validated in terms of money will only be considered in the accountancy system that is what is money measurement concept and now next we move on with the cost concept what is this cost concept here we have cost profit price so all of us know uh, what is the price right so here we take cost we add some profit we make it a price so here this is a uh, normal equation which we see everywhere in any of the business so coming here when i an owner is going to invest something and he establish a business he need something like he need some raw material he need some assets like furniture he need machinery he need some land he need so many things to establish a business or to start the business right so at that moment he is going to buy some uh, uh, like uh, machines when we take uh, machines we take land or we take uh, some furniture for business right so these are the items which an owner is going to get in the uh, into the business so what is the cost of the machine let us take it as 10000 and what is the cost of land let us take it as for example 1 lakh and coming to furniture let us take it as 5000 so as a whole uh, something which he is going to get as capital is a uh, 1 lakh 1 lakh 15000 right but he is going to get it in terms of machinery in terms of land and furniture right so now coming to machine machines it is costing 10000 land 1 lakh and furniture 5000 right so here when he has established his business he invested this 1 lakh 15000 rupees on some fixed assets so these are all fixed assets let us discuss about what are fixed assets what are uh, current assets uh, fictitious assets and all in the next coming sessions uh, like generally uh, assets means what we own what we own is assets liabilities are what we owe is the uh, are the liabilities so coming to this machines furniture or land all these are fixed assets fixed assets are which we can touch see uh, are uh, which we can feel are the fixed assets and which have some value in them okay so these are the fixed assets which i have taken as a example so machines furniture and land all these three has some value in them that is uh, worth 1 lakh 15000 so owner is going to get this uh, amount of uh, rupees as capital when he starts the business so after few years of his establishment of the business let us take after 5 years after 5 years what is happening after 5 years the machine's value of 10000 becomes 5000 for example okay and when we take land definitely nowadays real estate has 
got wings and it is flying like anything this has this might have become some 10 lakhs okay and uh, coming to furniture this may come down to 2000 for example so this is the market value of these assets okay as a whole after 5 years uh, if we consider after 5 years if we consider after uh, what what we what is the amount which we are going to have when we liquidate uh, after five years? So that is ten lakhs uh, five plus two seven thousand. So ten lakhs seven thousand is the market value. Is a market price. If we are going to close down the business and sell off all the assets, whatever an owner has got into the business, right? So actually, how much he has invested? One lakh fifteen thousand he invested, and for that one lakh fifteen thousand, after five years, the value has become ten lakhs seven thousand rupees. If he is liquidating or if he is selling off all those fixed assets, so because the value of these assets is 10 lakh 7000 can we put it in our balance sheet as 10 lakh 7000 absolutely no we should not put them as 10 lakh 7000 always the accounting system goes on with the cost concept only what is the cost which a, a business is going to incur at the time of purchase of any kind of asset or any kind of expenditure like these are all assets if we take stationery it is costing some 100 rupees that is the expenditure what we have spent on that that 100 rupees only to be included in the books of accounts and the same uh, uh, stationery is costing 120 rupees in the next month so can we include that uh, because the price has gone up, can we include uh, in the accounting system that we, we, we have uh, uh, purchased or we have spent 120 rupees uh, in the accounting system? We cannot do that, right? So in the same way, any of the assets, whatever we have bought at the initial stage of the business or at any stage of the business, whatever amount which we have spent on that particular uh, asset or particular expenditure that amount only to be recorded in the books of accounts and we should never compare with the market value so that is all about this cost concept is so whatever cost we have incurred to buy that is the cost concept that should only be included in the books of accounts okay and now let's move on with the going concern concept. The next concept is going concern concept. So when we establish a business, we should always think that we are going to exist for longer duration. See, if we take a, a human tendency, we really li like to die? Absolutely no. We don't want to die. Even some uh, disease has attacked that we, we come to know that we are going to die in very uh, few days. But still our willpower is more and we always think that we are going to do or we are going, uh, I'm going to survive for, for, for further more days. We feel that we, we have got that willpower uh, uh, as a human being, right? So we establish or when we establish a business also that business has to sustain for longer duration okay and always we think that we are going to uh, exist that business is going to exist for longer duration just for simple uh, like uh, simply just for uh, one year of duration or half year of duration, one is not going to establish a business. He is going to think that he is going to start a business for 
uh, start a business and he is going to exist for very long duration. So, according to this concept, what this going concern concept says, always we are going to think that uh, uh, the accounting system says that this accountancy or this business is going to exist for long duration, at least minimum 10 years, 15 years, 20 years like that. So, uh, an accountant who is doing accounts, he has to write the accounting system as if he is going to, uh, this accounting system is going to exist for more, uh, some more years together. Okay. So, going concern concept is always we are going to think that the accounting system is going to exist for long duration. That's it. And now, going with the realization concept. What is this realization concept? See, uh, I have taken some example like machinery, uh, like land, furniture and all. Right. I told that uh, when I have considered the cost of amount which I have spent on this is 1,15,000. And what is the market price? 10 lakhs, 7,000. Here, market price is 10 lakhs 7000 when we check it out in the market but what happens actually when i have sold it at the market price i'm going to sell these three assets uh, like uh, later on on after some duration i'm going to sell the uh, these assets okay when i sell actually this 10 lakhs 7000 i'm not going to receive for example See, I know that 10 lakh 7000 is a market price and I have sold it, but the amount I have not received yet. It is, uh, have to be very clear. We have to be very clear where here the amount I have sold all these three assets. All these three assets I have sold. So these assets, we have to treat them only we have to put the value uh, that is 10 lakh 7000 only once the uh, amount is released until unless the amount is released one cannot write this is the 10 lakh 7000 rupees is the uh, amount which we have received until unless we receive in the hands of the business until unless we receive the amount in the hands of the business till then one should not put it in the uh, books of accounts may be sold but the amount is not yet released by our uh, by that opposite person so till then one cannot uh, write the amount until unless the realization happens on that particular assets Till then, we are not supposed to write anything in the books of accounts. Okay. So, this is a realization concept. And coming to the dual aspect concept, which is very important. So, coming to dual aspect concept, one must know what is, uh, what are the different accounting systems which we have in our accounting. Uh, generally, we have two types of accounting systems, which I am going to discuss in the next session. That is uh, book entry or bookkeeping and uh, double entry system. Okay. So, this uh, dual aspect concept we have in this dual aspect concept is for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction according to Newton's third law. So, don't wonder, I am there in accounting system only. Here, dual aspect concept means here for every action there is equal and opposite reaction, right? That means I want to buy a TV, television. When I buy a television, what I do? I am going to pay some amount. So, I am going to receive what? Television. Okay. So, I am going to buy a television for, let us take, 70,000. Okay. I am going to buy a television for 70,000. And this is, these are the two different aspects. So, TV, buying TV, 
and spending 70,000. These are the two different aspects which we have to consider. We spend this, we spend this 70,000 and we get the worth of 70,000 as television. So here we spend or we, we are giving and what we are receiving? We are receiving worth of 70,000 which is television. So is it not equal or is it not balancing? Yes, absolutely it is balancing. So this concept, only dual aspect concept, this concept dual, we have two aspects which is recognized in accountancy, not a single aspect. See, for example, I write a, a transaction stating that purchased, purchased, TV for rupees 70,000. This is a sentence. Okay. So if I buy something to my house, what will I do? I, I just say, I have purchased, I have bought a new television in my house. Right. This is one sentence. This was there in very olden days and uh, where the book uh, uh, keeping used to be there. But uh, in modern days, we don't have any single entry system in accountancy. See, if we consider only single entry system, this is what is the single entry system. Purchased a TV for 70,000 rupees. This we can state it as a statement. Here we have to identify, differentiate the two aspects where one receiving, the other one is giving aspect. So coming to the terminology of accountancy, here we are going to consider what is the giving aspect, what is the giving aspect and what is the receiving aspect. We consider according to the terminology of accountancy, giving aspect is credit, receiving aspect is debit. So debit is receiving aspect. and uh, credit, credit is giving aspect. So debit means receiving, we are getting something, credit means we are giving something, okay? So these are the two accounting aspects which we go on further with all the rest of the sessions. So this is very, very important, debit and credit. When we do journal entries, when we do ledgers, when we do trial balance, uh, we require this debit and credit. So we basically, these are the basic concepts which one must know about the debit and credit aspects, which is receiving and giving aspects. So for every transaction which are of a financial nature, that is money measurement concept again, what all are the of financial nature are going to be considered in accountancy and we consider only the cost values and we think that only we are going to exist for long duration and whatever, uh, whatever amount is realized on that particular asset only we are going to put it in an accountancy book and uh, for every transaction we will have two effects that is debit and credit and we should consider uh, business as separate party and owner as separate party. So these are the overall concepts of the accountancy, which are the mandatory rules to be followed, to be remembered for further uh, accountancy system when we do the problems in the next coming sessions that is in journal and ledgers and all. Okay. okay. So now uh, let us move on with the uh, next thing that is accounting conventions. So let's move on with the conventions. So coming to conventions, materiality. Until unless the item or until unless the uh, uh, like uh, values are uh, materialistic, which are going to be 
materialistic one cannot record in the books of accounts so we have to consider what are all the materialistic things only we are going to record in the books of accounts non materialistic things are not recorded in the books of accounts this we have to ensure and see which is not relevant we should not consider we are going to consider which are all of relevancy see as i have taken one small example at the initial uh, at the uh, early stage of my session so i have taken that one person a good uh, experienced person is going to retire what when what can we do he is retiring because his age is gone we should give him some rest though he is too intelligent though he is too hard worker though he is excellent person we have to give retirement as per the age right so is it affecting uh, anything uh, in the accountancy system it is not at all affecting it is affecting the hr person because he has to uh, see the capable person uh, uh, just like him uh, just like uh, what are the qualities he possesses he has to hr person has to take care of uh, uh, recruiting such kind of equivalent person in the uh, system that is the headache of hr person not the accounting system so is it relevant to our accountancy it is not relevant to accountancy so we are going to take what is relevant to the account only we are going to consider if it is not relevant maybe that is affecting our turnover the because of that person if that person is leaving the organization that is going to affect our turnover a bit okay but if it is once it is affected then uh, we are going to take or we are going to consider the number values we are going to uh, consider that money value only we are not going to affect we are not going to consider because he retired we cannot uh, write anything in the books of accounts okay so only relevant items or relevant uh, uh, and materialistic things only we have to consider in the books of accounts and coming to disclosure so we do all these we do follow all these rules and regulations and uh, do some accounting system and give some what is the profit of the uh, uh, organization and maybe loss of the organization and we uh, create some balance sheet but why are we creating for whom we are creating uh, to know what we are creating we are creating we first business owner should know what is the financial condition because he has to improvise his business always we think that we are going to exist for long duration when we want how can we exist for long duration in fact until unless we get profit we cannot exist for long duration do i like to have uh, incur a uh, lot of losses every year no no human wants to have loss right always i want to have profits and i want to become rich okay not only me everybody right so when we want to have profits we are going to think like that and we want to act like that we have to direct in that way where we are going to have profit in our business so to whom uh, like uh, first thing is whatever uh, accounting system we follow that has to be disclosed to the owner to the employees because employees uh, due to the uh, work of the employees that organization is going to sustain so until unless there is no employee there is no organization right so if no man is there that business is not going to sustain right so employees should know owners should know shareholders of that company should know who are the creditors who are the creditors what is this creditor you may ask a question right 
So coming to creditor. So creditor. So I'll tell you who is this creditor. Creditor means I have sold some amount of goods out of my business. When I sell some goods, he is supposed to give me some amount of money. So I sold goods, sold some goods or some items to some X person. So this X person is well known to me. Uh, like he says or he promises that he's going to give back money uh, 1000 rupees after one month. After one month. Okay. This one month, uh, this 1000 rupees he's going to give back after some time duration. He promised that me that he's going to give after one month because he's having some shortfall in money uh, in, in his pocket. So he's promised me that he's going to give me some amount of money that is 1000 rupees. So this X person is debitor or we call it as debtor. We call it as debtor. He is supposed to give us money. Is debtor. Okay. Now I'll tell you one more thing. I have purchased goods. Purchased goods from Y. From Y rupees 2000, for example. Okay. What I should do? Maybe I'll purchase raw materials for my business. So I have purchased from Y. Okay. When I purchase from Y, I have to give this 2000 rupees to Y. Okay, so Y is my creditor now. Y is my creditor. X is my data. Okay, to whom we should give money? To whom we should give money is creditor. From whom we have to collect money is data. This is all short term business. Okay, within very short period of time, we are uh, going to pay back or we are going to receive back. Okay. So if we are supposed to give to some vendor of our raw materials, who, are, who, who is going to supply our raw materials. So that person is creditor to us and uh, this to whom we have sold goods and that person has to give money. So he is debtor to us. Okay. So now coming back to the disclosure convention. So creditors to creditors we have to disclose our financial status okay because we are supposed to pay him right he has to know what is the financial condition of our business until unless he know what is the condition of the business he'll be demanding i want my money back i want my money back right so that's the reason we have to give we have to disclose all our uh, financial statements to creditors, to owner, uh, to shareholders, and uh, to employees, to employees, etc., or any other stakeholders. Okay, so. So that everybody uh, buddy knows what is the financial condition of the business, right? So it uh, uh, like uh, uh, according to the convention of uh, conventions, one must disclose or uh, the accounting system has to be transparent. Okay, and going uh, coming to consistency. What is this consistency? So. The items which are consistent in nature, for example, like when we take uh, the accounting period. So what is the accounting period of a business uh, like in India? Generally, we follow a financial year that is 1st uh, April to 1st April 
April to 31st March. This is the financial year we follow. So generally we pay taxes uh, by 31st March, uh, by uh, 1st April, right? So we close all our accounting system uh, in this financial uh, calendar, financial year. So 1st April to 31st March is the financial year we have. So in this financial year, uh, according to this financial year, we just follow, right? We also pay taxes or we, we uh, assess our tax, everything in this financial year, right? So here, a business has to consistently follow the same accounting period. Why it has to follow the same accounting period? Because when we compare two financial statements, one must, why we need to compare two financial systems to or two financial uh, uh, statements because one must know what is the improvement which we have got, what are the pitfalls we have faced uh, in the previous year and due to what has affected the financial system and due to uh, what conditions the uh, uh, like uh, we, we are incurring losses due to what conditions we are having profits in the last year and the next year. So we have to compare the two accounting, uh, we have to compare two financial statements. When we want to compare two financial statements, the accounting period should be same. One can say one, one uh, first year, uh, a business uh, started uh, like uh, following this accounting period. That is 1st April to 31st March. And next year, it cannot say that I'm going to follow the calendar year that is 1st Jan to uh, 31st December. One cannot say that because it has to uh, uh, like uh, first, it has started with this accounting period and it cannot change to this because it cannot compare what is the uh, exact financial system. So what is the, uh, how it is going to compare uh, according to that duration. So it has to consistently go with the same accounting period for the same, uh, like either it has to follow the calendar year or it has to follow the financial year. So it has to be consistent. Okay, and the last one is conservatism or conservation. So it has to consist for long duration. So these are all the accounting conventions, which are all the basic principles of accountancy, which uh, one must remember for uh, doing the accounts. So here with this, uh, these are the rules and regulations which are mandatory to know uh, uh, by any of the person when they want to start uh, doing accounting. So with this, I end up my session. Thank you so much for patience listening. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.